Hi everyone, this is Karen and I wanted to do just a short lecture, I call it a mini lecture, a short screencast um, talking about using synchronous tools in your online class. Um, Virginia Commonwealth University does not require synchronous class meetings as part of their online program uh, and in fact I, I don't think I'm allowed to require that you attend a synchronous class um, but it may be something that you want to incorporate in your own online class. Other universities do. I also teach for James Madison University and I have a regularly scheduled class time with those students at the beginning of the semester and we use that time to meet just like we would face to face except we meet online. Um, now I don't meet every week with them online and it's not the kind of class it's kind of a project-based class um, and I don't meet for two and a half hours online I think that's an awfully long time um, to be online and in a session so we normally meet for about an hour and a half every other week I do short little lectures and then some activities with them and I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through this particular screencast um, the other uh, the other secret is that you can also use these for office hours and, and we'll talk about that as well um, but just a way of being able to meet live with someone now obviously the quickest way to meet live with someone is to use your telephone and and we've already talked about that a little bit online um, I do provide my phone number to students if I were teaching k-12 I would probably as someone in the class suggested um, set up a Google voice account so that it would mask my real phone number um, but students would be able to call me and leave voicemail and and talk to me that way every semester I probably talk to several students by phone over the course of the semester whether they call me or I request a phone call with them there are times in your course when you're just gonna need to talk to people rather than um, send an email or talk to them on a discussion forum in some cases you may have a student who doesn't ever seem to check in who doesn't ever get started on the course and then that's always a good time to pick up the phone and call them other times so if someone's had a particular crisis in their life or or otherwise needs some support that way talking to them is a good thing I've also found over the my long career in educational technology that sometimes people are just really intimidated by the technology and it helps for them to be able to talk to me we can sort of go through things together on the computer and so on and so forth so as we're thinking about synchronous tools don't miss out on your telephone as as one of the best synchronous tools generally for one-to-one -one meetings with your students now I'm screencasting this but I'm screencasting it through Blackboard Collaborate which is one of the tools that I have available to me as a professor at both VCU and JMU it comes packaged into Blackboard. I looked through course sites and I do not believe that Blackboard Collaborate is included in course sites as one of the tools you can use. But if your school division is really going forward with online learning and they adopt a learning management system like Blackboard, it will probably, in, hopefully it will include Blackboard Collaborate as part of the package so that that's the tool that you can use. But we'll talk about some of the other free ones that are there. But I thought it might be helpful as I'm talking talking about what an what a synchronous tool looks like to just have some of those features available that I could show you So just a couple of quick tips here for running synchronous sessions. They're very much like regular face-to-face -face classes, except that you're doing them online and everybody's at their own house or at the coffee shop or wherever they are. Um, you can use them for full class meetings, or I often will just use them for office hours as a way of meeting with someone um, besides using the phone. There are some features of a tool like Blackboard Collaborate that add to to being able to meet with a student because we can look at shared work together um, or or do things on the whiteboard or so on and so forth so while I'm happy to talk to someone on the phone if we need to review their project or, or do some other kinds of work together I will often suggest that we use Blackboard Collaborate for that meeting one thing to keep in mind is that if you're using a free tool there may be a limit to the number of people that can be in the room and sharing at the same time that's often Often one of those um, deciding factors between the free and paid version of a product is the number of people that can be on board for you so um, keep that in mind as as you're looking at tools 
The second bullet here is the, I think, probably the really important one. Doing online video conferencing is probably one of the most tech knowledge, technologically intensive things you will do in your online class. And so if you want to have a really good synchronous session, you need to do a lot of prep work ahead of time. Um, clear instructions for using the tool. Um, you might want to set up a test session. So if your course is set on Thursdays at, at 5 o'clock, maybe Tuesday at 5 o'clock, you, you'll have the room open and people can come into the online room and test out their microphones together, uh, test out their microphones with you, or make sure they know how to get in. Um, they definitely want to try to get into the room prior to the class start time. Um, you're looking at Blackboard Collaborate. It runs on a Java base, and often there will be a Java update that will have to be installed before you can even start up the room. And so that can be, you know, a hundred megabyte download. So if you've waited until five minutes to seven to come into class, and now you have to download a big, a big. Um, file, you're going to obviously going to be late to class. So you need to let people know that there's even, even though the tools are web based, they often want to install something on your computer. So if you're using a school computer, you may not be able to install it. You might have to work with the tech people. Um, it may be a particular browser. Uh, my organization, VISTI, the Virginia Society for Technology and Education, uses Adobe Connect for our webinars. And anymore, because it's flash based, it really only works works in Safari on the Macintosh or Internet Explorer on the Windows side. So I need to let people know that when they come in, you need to start within that particular web browser in order to open up the Adobe Connect room so that all the features will work. So there's, again, so this is very technologically heavy. And so you want to prep people ahead of time, provide them with help. Um, one of the best ways to participate in a course like this is to at least have headphones and if you're planning on allowing your students to speak they should also have a headset microphone that helps cut down on feedback and makes it easier for everyone to understand them as well so that's another tip that you want to provide for your students so there's a there's a fair amount of startup with it um, it may be that your first class is just a test class where we see if everybody can get in and and use the tools but there's definitely uh, a learning curve with this kind of tool. So if your school division decides that they want to adopt one of these video conferencing tools, ask for professional development or perhaps a group of ITRTs or a group of people who are going to be using it can get together and go through the help files and practice using it and then teach other people how to use it. There are There's lots of bells and whistles, some of which you will never ever use as part of the tool. Um, but it's nice to know that they're there and, and some of the other things that you can do as part of using the tool. And then finally, when you're actually in the session, um, try to make it as interactive as possible. Think about it as a real face-to-face -face class, even though you're all spread all over the place and you're meeting online. Um, you could still do a lecture with PowerPoint slides. They're easy to load and you can use you know, include links to videos and so on and so forth. But an hour and a half of listening to someone on the computer talk gets very old very fast. So I try to limit any kind of lecturing I do in an online class to about 10 minute chunks. And then I do a, an activity with the students or I allow them to have conversation. And then if I need to, I can do another five or 10 minutes and then we do group work or maybe we share our screens and show off some projects we're working on, um, but I try to make it as interactive as possible. So as you're thinking about looking at video conferencing tools, there are some different kinds of features that you might want to look for. So one of those is the ability to do video and audio. So I don't have my video turned on right now, but you can see up here in the left hand corner, there's my pretty picture and I could click my video button if I wanted to. Um, it's just that making a screencast with video in the screencast gets a little weird. So I could turn my video on, everybody in the room could have their 
their video on so we could all see each other truly live. Um, the only issue with that is that it can be a real bandwidth killer. So if you get more than four or five people in a room that all have their video turned on, it can it can cause real bandwidth issues. So normally um, I don't. I just have people put their pictures up. Um, but I also have audio here in Blackboard Collaborate as well. So we can just click the talk button and then we're able to hear each other talk. Uh, most high-end or most video conferencing tools will have a list of the participants. Um, you notice Blackboard Collaborate has a variety of kind of fun little built-in kinds of things. You can put up a smiley face if you want to. So, you know, if you have a group of 25 or 30 people and students in the room, and we've talked about a lot about this as being a problem in an online class, in a face-to-face -face class, if you're confused, I can probably tell from the look on your face. In an online class, even in a live setting, I can't see you. So it may be that a student wants to click the confusion button or the slow down button um, or the that was funny kind of button. Um, Blackboard Collaborate also allows you to raise your hand if you want to. So if you have a question and you want to be recognized, you can raise your hand. Um, this one, this button is for people to just step away for a minute so that, you know, if you do need to get up and use the restroom or, or do something else, you can tell people that you have done that. And then there's also a poll feature built into Blackboard Collaborate. And most um, tools like Blackboard Collaborate or Adobe Connect will have some kind of little polling tool built in as well. And then there's text chat. Um, Blackboard Collaborate has it, Adobe Connect has it, many of the video conferencing tools have text chat. So even while one person's talking, other people can be typing in the chat window and sharing their ideas um, to the whole group. Notice this has a full room and then it also has the chance to talk just to the moderators in the room. You can also have individual conversations with, with people, private chats with people as well. Many of the tools have a shared whiteboard um, and it really just does look like a regular whiteboard. There's the one that comes with a with Blackboard Connect. I can grab a pen and draw on the whiteboard if I want to. I can make sure I'm drawing here. There we go. I can put text on the whiteboard if I want to. Um, I can draw items. I can put screen captures on and so on and so forth. So this is and this can be a collaborative place. This is a public page so everybody can be contributing to the whiteboard if they want to. And let me get back to my slides here. There we go. Um, it's really nice to be able to uh, record, uh, sc share your screen. Uh, this is why sometimes if, if it's a student who's having problems, you don't always want to just talk to them on the phone. If there's things they're not understanding about what's going on in the class, they may want to um, share your screen so you can show them how to do something or do some problems on that whiteboard together. But sharing your computer screen so if people are having trouble finding something, you know, during your first, if you do a synchronous class, during the first class that might be where you do the, the um, guide to the to the course and show them where to find things and, and where to put things and, and so on and so forth. Some video conferencing tools will allow you to record and archive the sessions. Notice Blackboard Collaborate has a little recording button up in the right hand corner. If I click that it records everything that happens in the class and then a, uh, an archive is created in the course that people can get back to. So if somebody misses the class or they want to review what happened in the class they can do that. And then the other piece is the ability to break students into small groups. And um, those are called breakout rooms in Blackboard Collaborate. And I can set up random breakout rooms or I can send particular students to particular rooms. They have all the features of the regular room within their room. And so they can have a whiteboard that they work on. Um, they can be talking to each other and so on and so forth. And then they can come back into the main room and share what they've done. I also pull down the tools menu because this is what I meant by bells and whistles. Um, Blackboard Collaborate has lots of stuff that I have 
never used. For instance, there's a graphing calculator involved. Um, you can see the various kinds of interactions that you can have and you can put in the kinds of emotions that you might want to use. Um, you can do polling and there are yes no polls and then there are also multiple choice polls. So you could have students do a quiz as they came into the room. Uh, the recording we've already talked about. Um, one of the things that you can do with Blackboard Collaborate that tends to be an add-on that not everybody always has is to be able to telephone in to the session. Um, for most of the video conferencing tools that's a pretty expensive add-on to allow that telephone bridge or to use the telephone for your audio. There's a built-in timer. Uh, I can have video set up and then there's my whiteboard and some of the different things I can do with the whiteboard. So there are a lot of tools and that's why it's really important that before, especially if your school division is thinking about purchasing a package, it's this is one of those times when it's kind of important to get everybody together, look at the different features. If you're buying it from someone, maybe bring the salesperson in and have them do a demonstration. Um, go out on the internet and talk to other people or conferences and say, hey, what video conferencing tool are you using? You know, every school division in Virginia right now is dealing with the fact that they're going to have to offer online classes. Um, and so it might be nice to, for them to... Um, for them to be able to talk amongst themselves about using video conferencing and which tool they're going to use. So don't don't just sort of adopt the first package because somebody's brother-in-law uses it in his business. Really think about the different things that you want to be able to do with the tool and then look at the packages and look at the pricing um, for the number of students that you're going to have and, and so on and so forth. But those are these are some of the high-end features that, that you're going to want to look for. Now, some of the tools. Um, so we're looking at Blackboard Collaborate. It's kind of a typical one. Um, you are all uh, instructors in the course that I'm teaching. And so if you want to go in and look at Blackboard Collaborate and set up a session and try it out, I'm more than happy to have you do that. It's listed under the tools section of our Blackboard course, just called Blackboard Collaborate. There is also a Wimba classroom tool that is kind of the old version of Blackboard Collaborate um, that's available as well. And you could you can try that out too, but um, Collaborate's really replaced Wimba. Uh, but obviously to use this, you have to have Blackboard. So if, if you're not going to adopt Blackboard, then Collaborate's a little bit harder to get. I think you may still be able to get a Collaborate room without actually having Blackboard, and it would be a matter of getting some pricing. The one everybody kind of goes for right away is Google Hangouts. Um, and probably many of you have been involved in Hangouts. Um, they are video conferences. And you basically start them up from your Google Plus account. And you can have, I believe, up to 10 people in the room who can talk. And there's text chat included in it. And you can share your desktop. Um, I'm not sure if there's a shared whiteboard in Google Hangouts or not. but. I would suspect if there isn't now, there probably will be. Google's very good at adopting varieties of different kinds of um, tools. What you can't do is record and archive unless you broadcast them, and you have to do that for the public, um, and it ends up in your YouTube account, so probably not something you want to do with your classes. And it's just, it's a, it is, a, it's a free public tool. Um, it's great for small group meetings with you and maybe a few students where you just need to talk some things over. But in terms of running a full class in Google Hangouts, I'm not sure how well that would work. Um, but but uh, you can share slides in Google Hangouts. Uh, Visti has used Google Hangouts for some of our webinars. So if you have a small group that you'd like to get together and work with and you want something that's free and pretty quick to get into and pretty easy to use, um, Google Hangouts is an option. Now, that being said, I just had a meeting with some folks the other day and one of the women, the first woman in the room, uh, couldn't hear anybody else and it turned out that she could only hear the people 
she could only hear people who had logged in before she had so we waited until everybody else logged in and then she logged out and came back in and then she was able to hear everyone so I'm not sure why that was the case but somehow in troubleshooting it we figured out that that was the case so even a even a tool that seems really easy to start up can also have its own little glitches and the problem with a free tool like Google is there's not a whole lot of support out there for it um, if you pay for a tool like collaborate you're going to get on the ground support for it um, and have lots of help files and people that you can talk to Google Hangouts you'll have forums you can go to and, and people you can talk to that way but you're not going to have a phone number that you can call uh, Fusebox is new to me uh, someone in one of my other classes talked about using it it appears to be a free option it has a fair number of the features built in um, so it's and it's a step up I would guess it's probably somewhere between Blackboard Collaborate and Google Hangouts in terms of the features that it offers the other ones that are listed down here are the ones that do charge money um, WebEx, GoToMeeting, and Adobe Connect are kind of the three big business video conferencing tools that people will use. Um, I've used all three of them. I'm a huge fan of Adobe Connect. It's very similar to Blackboard Collaborate. ISTE uses it for their webinars. Vista uses it for their webinars. It's got lots of great built-in features and I have a license where I can have one room open at a time. It can include up to a hundred people and it's four hundred and twenty five dollars a year which is just about thirty five dollars a month. Um, so if you're if you um, wanted to have a license that was shared amongst people multiple teachers could use it they can't just use it at the same time you only have one room so one teacher would use it on Tuesdays at four o'clock and another teacher would use it on Wednesdays at four o'clock and, and so on and so forth and then another tool that I haven't looked that closely at but that I know a lot of teachers are using for tutoring is called Scribbler um, it's pretty much a interactive whiteboard that has video and audio capabilities built into it so it started as an interactive whiteboard and then they've built on top of it its free version is limited to two people so if you need to talk to some students to talk to a student in a live setting scribbler might be the choice although probably Google Hangouts would would be just as easy for that uh, you can see that scribbler goes up in price based on the number of people and for 50 people it's about $40 a month so these aren't cheap options um, to be able to do the synchronous meetings but you are getting a lot of bang for your buck in terms of the features that you have right now in Blackboard Collaborate you really do have a fully functional classroom and um, and there's a lot that goes into making that happen so those are some of the tools that you can use for synchronous meetings not I'm not talking about just audio video here like voice thread or that kind of thing but actually meeting live with people at the same time so that's your little mini lecture on synchronous tools. Please feel free to share any other tools that you might be familiar with um, in the resource discussion forum and also any questions that you might have you could put in the ask the instructor section as well.